Bethesda just released the highly anticipated Expeditions DLC update for Fallout 76 on the public test server, meaning that we are getting to test this early and basically getting to see what this feature is all about. This is a big one. Expeditions have been talked about since early 2020 with that original roadmap under the first off-map experience for Fallout 76. So in this video, I'll give you the rundown as to what this actually is, what it's adding in, but what is probably going to be a bit more interesting are my thoughts on this because I got some thoughts on Expeditions now that they are finally here and it's not all that positive with timestamps below so you can skip around or get to the section you most want to see. And when going into this video, it is important to say that basically everything here is a work in progress. This is on the public test server. We're giving feedback around something that is very much so subject to change as this isn't actually coming out publicly in until fall. And although at this point, Fallout 76 is getting updates bringing it to new and unique locations, it's not getting updates that'll bring it to your phone. But thanks to today's video sponsor with Mech Arena, you can have a hardcore and truly competitive experience on the go. Because Mech Arena is a game where skill actually matters, such as with one of my favorite mechs with Killshot. He has a special ability with Melee Dash that will dart you into the enemies, and if you hit them, you'll deal massive damage. Except if you suck, like I do sometimes, you'll just be there, sitting next to enemies who can immediately obliterate you. When you pull off good combos, it feels absolutely incredible. But alternatively, there's Panther, who's one of the most versatile mechs out there. He's pretty good all around, but he could also place down the stasis barrier that will block all incoming fire and has the ability to completely change the tide of a battle. But to me, this is why I enjoy Mech Arena so much. There are a ton of different mechs to choose from, each with their own pretty distinctive abilities, and it does make each battle feel genuinely different. And Mech Arena has a ton going on this month. Battle Pass Season 6 kicked off giving you the opportunity to get some incredible new skins as well as other goodies, and there's even a new pilot with Asami. So don't wait because Mech Arena is completely free to play on Android and iOS right now, and you can use my personal link or scan the QR code on screen here to get a free starter pack worth $45. This including a Steel Reaper skin, 500 A-coins, and 70,000 credits. And if you're quick, you could even add me so we could play some matches together. But first, let's look at exactly what Expeditions are and really how you get into this. The simple summary is this is kind of like an off-map mission or a dungeon in a different location, kind of like an extended daily ops with no timer in a completely new place. Although you can't just jump into Expeditions. First, you're going to have to be introduced to the Responders, which are going to be one of the original factions from the game that have now returned and taken up refuge in the new White Springs Refuge. The lore behind this being that the responders return to what they thought was an abandoned building with White Springs, but shortly thereafter, a management liaison came to greet them and act as a middleman between management and the responders. Management basically referring to the Enclave here. Of course, the Enclave bunker is actually in White Springs, but hidden. And this isn't a Enclave DLC. It's really just hints to the Enclave or kind of nods here or there. The responders have retrieved a vertebrate and this management, aka the Enclave, are giving them ultimate site batteries to fuel this vertebrate. And that's where the gameplay element comes in, as we're going to have to do three daily quests each day in order to get enough ultra cells to actually be able to fuel that battery and in turn launch the vertebrate for expedition. We'll touch more on this later, but just to put it into context, every day you'll have to log in and do these three quests before you can do your one expedition for the day. One of which will be working with a chef named Esme. It's almost like a jank version of Overcooked in Fallout 76. You'll help with her cooking a stew and rather than having to do the typical search around the world for ingredients, she already actually has them in her closet. You help her assemble the stew with a time limit so you have to stir the stew, get the ingredients, prepare them, and then actually add them all to the stew. And you even get to choose the final ingredient which will give the stew a special effect. This one honestly isn't even that bad, it's a bit more unique and fun in the overall gameplay loop, and it just involves some searching for ingredients. The next one involves collecting 50 of some kind of junk, it could be wood, cloth, steel, etc. It's easy enough for many players that just have this junk located in their stash, you could quite literally just take it out of your stash, but if you're doing expeditions daily, you will need to do this and get 50 of this item once per day. The item will always be rotating, but that can very quickly add up, and the time it takes to complete this one will very widely. If you have 50 of that junk, you'll just probably run to your scrap box, take it out, and you are done with this quest. But if you're a newer player or just somebody who doesn't have massive stockpiles of everything, you'll probably burn through your reserves and then have to actually search for things again, which could make this take quite a bit longer. And it seems like this third quest will rotate. It'll be one of two quests that will switch. 
It's either going to be finding medical information, a fairly generic fetch quest. So you'll go to some location that will change each time, access a terminal, and then actually have to get a certain item. From there, you retrieve the item and return to the White Springs Refuge to return that to the medical team, or helping build out the Wasteland Survival Guide. You'll go around Appalachia to take three pictures of specific things. They'll describe different things each day. And then from there, you'll need to gather a certain item of some kind, typically a plant and return, and then you finish the daily quest there. And once you do these three quests, you'll have enough ultra cells for a full ultra sight battery, and you'll be able to jump up into the vertebrate and take off to your very own expedition. But of course, it's going to take you to a new location with post-apocalyptic Pittsburgh, this having its own lore also. Basically, the pit right now has members of the Union defending their land from ensuing raiders with the fanatics. The Union seem to be losing now, or at least on the losing side, largely because previously these groups of fanatics were separate, but now they have a mysterious and singular leader that brought them all together almost like Genghis Khan. But the pit is the Union's home, so they're holding on, and basically we're sent in as a mercenary of sorts to try and help them out. One of the Union members are in the White Springs Refuge and taking up home with the responders, and that's kind of our liaison for explaining what's going on the situation recruiting us. Although the responders are here and re-added in, technically they don't have much involvement in the expeditions themselves. It's really just using their vertebrae and getting from point A to point B. And from there, you're going to have a totally new menu on the map menu to actually to launch your expedition. There are two to choose from, but right now in the public test server, only one is live, so I can't really talk about this second one until we can play it. And from there, you're going to be entered into the pit, which is a completely new and very unique landscape. Visually, this is pretty striking right off the bat. It's more dense and built up than the rest of Appalachia. It has unique visuals and is just overall a beautiful place to explore. Although ultimately being relatively small and compact, and of course, there'll be enemies throughout with this fanatics. Right at the bat here, you're going to be meeting with a union member named Hex who will give you your first objective. The way these expeditions are set up is it's going to have three stages and the first two stages will basically have two objectives that will rotate or you'll just get them randomly each time. So the first objective will always be outside and you'll do one of two things. Either you'll help defend a saboteur who is basically an NPC setting up bombs around fanatic positions and you must keep him alive as he places four bombs and some fanatics are attacking or alternatively you're going to place a union transmitter at a depot and you'll have to defend the area as enemies attack it. Once you complete that first objective, you'll return to Hex and actually go into the Union base. And from here, you'll actually get a second objective that will involve you going into the Foundry, as well as here, you could talk to some other Union members. There aren't many, but you could talk to Wicker, who will give you some optional objectives to complete. The second stage of the expedition, taking you inside this really well-designed Foundry. It's a quite compartmentalized location, so there's going to be different sections and hallways or areas that connect each other, and you'll kind of be running throughout doing something, actually doing one of two things. One of the missions here will involve you finding fanatic safes that are going to be scattered around and you'll have to kind of look in specific areas to get these. They have important battle plans inside that you have to find. And once you find all three safes and fight through the fanatics along the way, you'll have to take these coolant cells and toss them into five vats in order to just sabotage the foundry because now the fanatics have it so we're trying to limit steel production. This is actually incredibly tedious because as you pick up the coolant vats and you have to do this one at a time, your character is slowed, so you're basically just slowly running to five separate things to throw a grenade in it. At this stage, I'd cleared out all the enemies, so it's kind of just running back and forth five times, but you're slowed half the time. But the other objective you may get when you enter the foundry is to rescue some captured Union soldiers. This being pretty simple, you're going to have to take out the warden to get the keys, then you'll free two groups of soldiers from cells, and after that, you'll have to create a chemical concoction to sabotage the foundry in a different way which basically entails finding a bunch of chemical items scattered around, this also having that kind of area bubble, and you'll have to look throughout it to find these items. And then once you get them all, you're going to place the concoction somewhere in the foundry to sabotage it. And then from there, you'll enter into the third stage, which seems to always be the same, as basically now Trogs, that iconic enemy from Fallout 3, are going to be taking over or all throughout the pit overall, or at least the exterior portion. You'll have to rush back to the Union base to help fend off these Trogs and try and keep the Union soldiers alive. And that actually is a specific optional objective here. You have to try and keep these guys alive as the Trogs attack, and eventually a boss Trog will come and you'll have to defeat them to finish off the mission. And that's really the expedition itself. If you did choose to do the optional objective for Wicker, which you likely will be doing if you want the rewards from this, you're going to basically have to find one, this box of Union supplies. This will just be placed somewhere. For me, it was always in the foundry. Then it'll make that beeping noise similar to what we had in Nuclear Winter, although this may be changed in the 
the future. So you'll have to listen for that noise, then find the location of this. And the second one will be to get some steel ingots. This is a lot easier. I actually did this pretty naturally most of the time. There's four steel ingots in the foundry and four on this outer portion. And the way this part will work is when you're in the general area of a steel ingot, it'll actually give you a quest marker to it. So just by completing the objectives and actually doing the quest here, I tend to find most of them or even all of them. And again, there are eight in total, but you only need five. So I found that side of things to be much easier. And as far as the difficulty here, this was overall pretty easy for me, at least as it exists right now. My first run solo, I didn't die once while doing the first parts of the expedition, except that trog attack was absolutely brutal and I died numerous times and I have never been able to keep all of the Union soldiers alive, even with teammates. The trogs tend to spawn at level 100 they do poison damage and all around just is a lot tougher than fighting a bunch of humans. But in general, it's not particularly difficult and there's no time limit. So as long as you don't quit or get a bug, the only aspect you could actually fail is the optional objective of keeping those Union soldiers alive. Otherwise, with enough time and perseverance, you could finish this easily. But speaking of, you will probably want to play this with others. You can only actually do one expedition per day by yourself. So you log on, do those three daily quests, then you can launch your own expedition that you are leading and then you're done for the day day unless you team up with others. There's a new expeditions public team and other people can launch their expeditions with this public team. And if you join them and join their expedition, you can complete it subsequent times. And you can do this with others as many times as you want. You can just only lead your own once per day. Although when you are the team member, it's pretty limiting. You're kind of just following the team leader around. He has to talk to everyone. He has to initiate the quest and actually go into the other world spaces. And when he finishes the expedition, you will be booted out. And we're looking at the rewards for expeditions. This is where things start to get somewhat spicy as there's definitely been backlash around this although do note Bethesda did say they are taking a look at the rewards and we'll likely see at least some changes to this so going to be brief on this aspect. The current system kind of sucks, but it might be getting changed. So this video may be quickly outdated in this regard. And again, we have a very long time until this releases. So just by beating the expedition, you get a lot of the general stuff. You'll get grenades, experience, a legendary item, etc. Once per week, you'll actually get 1000 score and a rare reward from the non-mod list. But the most notable new addition is a new currency that you'll earn from expeditions with stamps. And the way this works right now is you get one stamp just for completing the expedition by yourself or with a team. You'll get a bonus two stamps when you lead an expedition so that once per day leading in the expedition will potentially get you three stamps for that completion. But you can get up to an additional seven stamps for completing the optional objectives. That was locating the supplies, locating all the steel ingots, and keeping all union members alive. So when you lead an expedition and do all the optional objectives, you can get up to 10 stamps from a singular run. And there's a new vendor to trade these stamps at, that with Giuseppe, this being back at the White Springs Refuge. He's going to have a bunch of new items, not really any interesting ones, but some new ones, a couple of outfits, some camp items that are pretty forgettable and minor, as well as weapon skins. The two big and notable rewards are the Union Power Armor and Auto which are totally new and added in, which you can't actually get from Expeditions. You can get mods for those two items from Giuseppe, but at least at the time of filming, it seems like to actually get the power armor and auto axe, you'll have to actually get it via the season system, or at least that's what it looks like right now. Technically right now in the PTS, you can't get either of those. And these right now are incredibly expensive. Let's say you just do one expedition perfectly per day and you get that full 10 stamp payout. With the current build, it'll take nearly 400 100 days to unlock everything. And even if you do two to three expeditions per day, it'll still take around a week to unlock even just this one outfit, which is a lot of effort for one pretty mediocre outfit. But again, this is likely getting changed, so I'll be brief with this part. Looking at my opinions on expeditions overall, I genuinely feel like this is one of the most disappointing releases for Fallout 76 for me. When you look at it from the perspective of a feature that has been worked on in some way for several years, and really what it could have been, Fallout 76 has this incredibly unique component of being early in the lore. Bethesda is finally taking us to an off-map location and there's really just not a whole lot going on there. Expeditions are tedious and not that interesting from a gameplay perspective and even the rewards are just kind of bad but again hopefully
hopefully that'll be changed. You start off with these three daily quests, which it really just feels like this was completely artificial. Like the daily quests you have to do before this just feels like one of those things where they're trying to increase overall play time. So they had to tack on something in the front. Like as I was doing these for the third or fourth time, it was just starting to feel like a job. Like I just wanted to play the expedition. This pre expedition grind was not that interesting or fun. And then when you actually get to the expedition, you're met with this beautiful landscape. As I mentioned before, it's one of the most interesting landscapes we've had in a long time. And although the world is interesting, the things in it just are really, really boring. There are only a couple of NPCs to actually talk to. I wanted to find out more about the union. What was going on here? What is the lore of the pit at this time? And although there's some basic stuff, a lot of the dialogue choices throughout this entire DLC are just very surface level. Like you could basically just describe the union as the generic lawful good guys that are defending their land and the fanatics are the evil raiders that are coming in to attack. So yeah, now technically it goes a bit more in depth than that, but not really. That's kind of the gist of things and they don't really get into any interesting stories or tales that I feel like could be written around these factions. But one of the interesting parts about this is there's way more lore for the responders, which I'm okay with. I actually really liked. For me, some of my favorite parts about this expedition's experience overall was talking to and interacting with the responders in the White Springs Refuge. There's a lot of dialogue there. They still are fairly surface level, but at least there is more people to talk to. And there's more of those miscellaneous stories. There's a few minor interesting side quests and just felt like those characters were far more fleshed out and interesting, which is good. It's kind of like an appetizer, but it felt like the main event here was supposed to be the pit. And when you actually get to the pit, there's very little. There's some terminals and notes you could find, but I honestly found that those added almost nothing. There were the traditional fallout stories of something happening before the Great War or just a to-do list on a note, but very little as far as darker stories that you would hope to find in what is a war-torn area that had an apocalypse occur 20, 30 years before it. You don't really get any cool or interesting stories around that. And when it comes to the actual gameplay, it felt incredibly familiar and just really tedious. Fallout 76 is three years old now, and a lot of what you're doing here is something that you have almost certainly done already in this game. Stand around an NPC as they try and do something and shoot incoming enemies that you really don't know much of anything about. Like if you just swapped out the fanatics for the Hellcats, this DLC wouldn't be all that different. Maybe in the other mission, this will be expanded on more. We'll find out more about the fanatics and the mysterious leader. But at least as of right now, they were incredibly forgettable and basically served the role of generic enemy raider. The most fun I had on an objective was actually when it was defending that area where you put the transponder down because it was just slightly more unique in that it has this bubble and if an enemy steps in the bubble then you're going to start losing progress. It was at least a somewhat more interesting objective. And then once you actually get into the foundry you're just going to spend a ton of time running around in circles looking for things which is just not fun. With this DLC they rely heavily on that mechanic of okay here's an area there is a small or medium sized item them in this area. Find it. Okay, now actually find like six of them. Okay, cool. You did all those. Okay, here's area two. Now do it again and find another six. Add in a few enemies on top and that's kind of the gist of the experience. And I guess overall what I feel with Expeditions is I just wasn't having much fun playing this. There are very few new interesting rewards that made it feel like this entire grind was worth it. But again, that might be getting changed. There was a grind before you actually get to the grind, which is never fun. And I just feel like they could have done so much more establishing this world space and really this new little world you get to experience. I want to know more about these people and they just don't go there, which I don't understand why. To me, there's a very clear and nice formula for what could make a good Fallout 76 DLC. Give me a short two hour, three hour long story DLC experience like we got with Steel Rain. Introduce me to these factions or those people. Throw me into the pit and allow me to meet the fanatic leader and the union leader and then they have their own motivations. You get to see the two perspectives there. Perhaps you do a few quests for each of them and then and in the end, you come together to actually do the expedition mission side because Bethesda needs that repeatable content so you keep logging in. I feel like having some quests beforehand would have gone a long way to making me feel attached to these factions or just building out the lore overall because there's a lot of Fallout fans that love that. But as it stands right now with expeditions, I feel like one of the best features it has going for it is it's free. So if you already own the game, it doesn't really hurt to log on and give it a try. Try out the mission, try out the different variations of it, and then try out the other mission that will also be available and you'll probably have a good few hours
hours of fun, especially when playing with friends, but after that, I don't really see why you would stick around for this. There isn't really much of a change up on that fundamental gameplay loop, and this just kind of feels like another extra added feature that has a huge grind associated with it. Although one thing I will say is the stamps feature, great step in the right direction. Stamps seem like they are a big grind and that's going to take a while, at least right now, to unlock the items you want, but taking away the RNG and just giving us a currency that we could spend on the rewards we want rather than just having chance to determine the rewards we get is a big upgrade. I hope they apply this in the future and continue to go this method rather than the RNG method they so heavily used in the past. So overall, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear from you guys down below. Fortunately, we're in a situation where there is a ton of time for things to be overhauled and changed, and we'll likely see several updates. And of course, this isn't all the content. There is a totally second expedition mission coming. As always again, though, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I do hope to see you all next time. Later.